Welcome to Temple Grandin School's Power of 10 video series, where for our 10th anniversary, we are creating 10 videos to share 10 things about a variety of topics related to neurodiversity. Our last video was 10 tips from the trenches. Great tips to help parents navigate the social and academic challenges of guiding neurodiverse teens and tweens. You should check it out. Today, we're exploring 10 hobbies you should try. I am Sean Rothermill, Temple Grandin School's social studies teacher, and activities director. Over my years at TGS, I've seen students delve into many different hobbies. We've been inspired by our students who have introduced us to their interests and think you might be inspired too. With school letting out and summer beginning, we thought we'd have them share some of these activities with you to give you something to try now that you have time on your hands. Hobby number one, disc golf. Our students at TGS love to play disc golf. Using specialized discs, you aim for a basket-like target, as in golf, try to get your disc into the basket using as few throws as possible. Just get a set of discs at your local sports store, gather some friends, and tee it up. You can find disc golf courses online by searching disc golf courses near me. The second hobby we're featuring is drawing. Grab a sketchbook and some pencils or markers, and you can take your art on the road with you wherever you go. You can also draw digitally using a tablet and stylus. Let's hear what Percy has to say about art. I like that it's something to do while in class that doesn't distract me, and it's also nice to be able to put like designs to your own characters. Um, and I guess it's just fun to do. <laughs> As Percy said, drawing is a fun hobby in, in itself, and it can help people like Percy focus. You should see their art too. Percy is great at it. Next hobby, tabletop gaming. Our TGS students really enjoy this one. To understand the overall concept of tabletop gaming, listen to how CJ describes this activity. It's fun, that's mainly it. Yeah. It's just fun to build and paint stuff and then play the games, yeah. Sounds like there's a lot of different pieces to it that are yeah. interesting. There's building, painting, and playing. The three big arches of tabletop gaming, pillars if you will. As CJ says, from assembling and painting characters, to creating terrains for the game, to rolling the dice to determine how the story plays out, this hobby has a lot of different ways to engage your imagination. And it's a great way to do something with your friends. You can even play it outside when the weather allows. The fourth hobby we're sharing today is music. Learning music and playing it for yourself or others is something many people find fulfilling. This past winter, some of our students learned how to play ukulele. Ethan was a part of that class, and in addition to playing ukulele, he's an accomplished pianist. Ethan, how did you get into playing music? Like every stereotypical boy, I got into this art through video games. Stereotypically, yes, that's how I got in, but anyone can get in through any different means because music is a, a very popular thing. Tell us what you like about making music. Well, the creative freedom it offers, much like all other arts, but also the tactile feedback, both in the ears and in the fingers of whatever you're playing. You gotta love that. Getting into music through video games. But as Ethan said, you can get into playing instruments in many ways. It is a broadly enjoyed hobby. Here's another one a lot of people really enjoy, geocaching. This is another fun hobby you can take on the road with you, such as when you go on a road trip, which happens to be one of my favorite hobbies, because you can find geocaches everywhere. You look for hidden items using a GPS device and a geocaching app on your phone. Sometimes they are right under your nose. Jason is an avid geocacher, and he also does a special kind of geocaching called letterboxing where you find a notebook, stamp it, then use the letterbox stamp to mark a notebook that you take with you wherever you go searching. Jason, what do you like about this hobby? It's fun to find them and to keep track of your finds. You can find all different kinds of geocaches, like traditional ones, mini ones, and gadget geocaches. Jason, which geocaches are your favorite? 
Well, there's one not on Maple Tin that's uh, fun because it's a gadget cache. I like gadget caches. What's a gadget cache? It's uh, like that birdhouse uh, where it's disguised and you have to do fine, like do a puzzle to do it. The birdhouse uh, oh, one is an easy cool. one. The one in Maple Tin, uh, you use the magnets to unlock it. Hobby number six, coding. Many of our students love their technology. And not only do they love to be on their computers or gaming systems, they love to create their own software. Here's how Grant got started. I wanted a good computer to play Minecraft on. My dad said if I wrote him a certain program, he would help me buy a computer. And so I spent several months learning Python and writing this program so I could get a computer. I'm just, I, I, I'm still coding things. Um, and it's very annoying, but it's also fun when things work and getting stuff done. Grant likes the challenge of coding, especially when he finally achieves success. Not only that, he has already made technology his career. You can hire him to build a computer for you. Full disclosure, he is not paying sponsor for this video. This next hobby is delicious. Hobby number seven, baking. Get your recipe, gather your ingredients, and follow the directions. Alex likes to bake, and one of his favorite things to bake is brownies. Here's how a recent batch turned out. So it's not as crispy on the inside, but as to be expected, but mm -hmm. I, the big parts, they're not too crunchy, but like the outside's going to be crunchy. So. Alex, what's your advice about baking? Don't be intimidated by baking and cooking. It's pretty simple. Alex, anytime you want to bake brownies, I'm more than happy to help you eat them. Next is collecting. This is hobby number eight. Many people become captivated by some kind of item. It brings them joy. So they go hunting for more. Before you know it, they've developed quite a collection. Like my man Hayden. Hayden has found himself collecting limited edition food items like Baby Shark cereal and unique flavors of Coca-Cola. Hayden, what do you like about collecting limited edition food items? Well, I like collecting something that is so incredibly rare because with, with limited edition food items, there's already, um, a limited amount already be uh, already being produced and people are going to eat it e people are going to eat the contents and throw away the containers so to keep uh, so to preserve them in um, in their uh, in their original form it makes them uh makes it extremely rare and i hope one day valuable hayden has gotten himself into a hobby that's fun gives him something to look for and might be lucrative someday now, here's a hobby for those of you who like to work with your hands and have a finished product that you can wear, crocheting. All it takes is a needle and some yarn, and a pattern if you wish. Ralphie has been crocheting and knitting for quite some time. Ralphie, what do you like about your hobby? Uh, it's really fun and relaxing uh, if you just have you know a couple hours, you have nothing to do. Uh, knitting takes a lot of time. Uh, people like to be like, oh, you just knit a sweater overnight, but no, it takes a lot of time, and so uh, crocheting takes less time than knitting, but it's a fun thing to just do if you have nothing better to do for like an hour. In case you didn't know, Ralphie crocheted the hat that he was wearing, using a pattern that he came up with himself. Crocheting seems cool. It's a hobby that's relaxing and results in something that you can wear. The last hobby we're featuring is becoming one that Temple Grandin School is doing as a group currently, gardening. We started this project around Earth Day this year because we wanted to make a positive impact on our environment. We're building some raised beds. Soon we'll fill them with soil. Then we'll be planting all kinds of vegetables and flowers and learning what it takes to tend a garden and keep it growing. Before we know it, we'll be enjoying the fruits and veggies of our labor. So those are our 10 hobbies you should try. Give some of them a shot and see if you find a new activity that you enjoy. Thanks for joining us for this video. Catch us next time for 10 social norms for summer activities. Learn what's expected behavior for a variety of situations, such as the pool, the trail, public restroom, just to name a few. Also, please subscribe to the TGS YouTube channel and like this video. If you leave a comment or a question, we'll address it in our next video. We look forward to seeing you next time for the power of 10. We thank our sponsors for making this Power of 10 video possible.